In previous videos, I've shown you how to correct C-Log from scratch without any plugins or LUTs. But today, let me show you the plugin that I do use to make the entire process easier. I'm Rafael, and welcome to the channel. I am like most of you. I wanna get the best image as easily as possible with the least amount of friction. It's the reason why I choose one camera system over another, this piece of software over that. But to get to that point, you have to try a lot of different things to see what fits best. And when you do find something that makes the creative process easier, you lean into it. You embrace it full on. Today, I'm gonna be doing a review of Color Finale 2. Full disclosure, the guys reached out to me to see if I'd be interested in doing a review of the plugin for a free copy of it. I said that I already bought the plugin and I've been using it since version one but I said I would do a review if I can give away a few copies to you guys. So they were nice enough to agree to offer three copies for me to give to you guys. All you have to do for a chance to win is to like and comment on this video and I'll do a random draw in two weeks. Like, comment, and good luck. Just to be very clear, these are my thoughts on the plugin and how I use it in Final Cut. I've shown you how to color correct without any plugins or LUTs, but today, Let's use that plugin and see how much better it is. So let's jump into the computer so I can show you this plugin. Apple has improved its color management over the years by adding better color controls. They're more in line with the industry standards, but it still lacks the industry standard features found in DaVinci Resolve, say, the, which is the gold standard for independent color grading. All these tools are very useful and you can use them in almost any scenario. But I'm gonna show you all the great things that Color Finale adds that is still sorely missing in Final Cut. So let's jump into that right now. So this clip is from the Canon EOS R. It is C-Log. Select your clip, double click the plugin to add it to the clip. Open up your inspector. If it's not open, go to color management, click on show. And right now it's set to assume video, but because I know this is log footage, I'm gonna to go to assume log and we're done. Thank you very much. I'll talk to you guys soon. My name is Raphael. No, I'm just kidding. If your footage is exposed properly and your white balance in camera is close, this gets log footage looking great really fast. Let's just take a look at what has happened here. With that one click, it has done all the steps that I did in the no LUTs and no plugins tutorial on how to color correct C-Log footage. It has brought the blacks down to about 5% and the highlights to about 95%. The skin tones, they're between 40 and 70%. Let's see what the skin tone color is. I'm gonna add in the crop and it's a little bit to the yellow side. So we wanna add some more red, but we can just shift the tint and bring it in the right place. So I, as you can see, I cropped into the cheek. So this is the skin tone and it's between 50 and 70 IRE. So it's nearly perfect. And all I have to do is slightly adjust the tint to make sure that the skin fell on the skin tone indicator. So I'm gonna turn off the crop so this image right off the bat is corrected and is usable. I can now go and add any creative coloring that I want to do. So that's working with log footage. But what if you're not working with log footage and you have something straight out of the camera? So this is a neutral color profile that I have on the EOS R. So let's just add the plugin. I'm gonna double click again. And because this isn't log, this is actual video, I'm gonna leave it to assume video. So in this case, I'm just gonna click the auto white balance button. Or if you have a great card, you can actually go in and select it, but I'm just gonna leave it on auto. And let's just check where everything is. Thus far, the exposure is a bit too bright, so I'm gonna bring down the highlights. So I'm gonna bring down the exposure just a little bit. I'm gonna bring, bring down the contrast because I want the roll off from the lights to the shadows to be a little bit smoother. I'm gonna turn on the crop to see the skin tone and I'm gonna shift the tint just to bring some of that, the skin tones in the right place. And I'm gonna increase the saturation. So if you can actually see that the skin tone indicator is in the right place, I may wanna boost up the exposure again so that the skin is exposed correctly. So I'm gonna turn off the crop. Just the auto white balance tool is fantastic and being able to use the skin to fine tune it to make sure that the skin is the proper color is amazing. So let's go back to some log footage. I wanna show you how powerful this plugin actually is. So beyond those simple automation tools, another one specifically, so I'm just gonna reset this plugin and add it again. The process that I actually use is I go to use ACES. 
ACES stands for Academy Color Encoding System. It's a global standard for interchanging digital image files, managing color workflows, and creative masters for delivery and archiving. If this is something that you're able to get into sooner than later, then that would be fantastic. So I'm going to add Use ACES, and two more options come in. The input space and the output space. A lot of different options. If you're using a Sony camera, if you're using a Canon camera, or if you know the profile that you shot with the gamut, then you just select that or a very close one. And then you choose your output space. And because Final Cut loves to work in Rec. 709 at 100 nits, I'm just going to add that. And already those two steps have made this image into a very, into what I think is a very pleasant starting point. I love using ACES versus the Assume Log because the roll off from the highlights to the darks, it looks really, really good. This is the color space that I work in when I use DaVinci Resolve. The workflow is almost identical in my thinking when I start working with this. And because I know that the image was exposed properly and the white balance was set properly in camera, the image is gonna look good right away. But if it doesn't, you can always go in and use the next amazing thing that Color Finale adds. And that is the image analysis tools, which are fantastic. So we're just gonna open that up and you have false color and isolate, which these, oh, they're so good. Okay, let's talk through one at a time. False color in Final Cut. Yes, thank you. The only thing that I wish that this had right now is the ability to display a false color chart so you can quickly reference what each of these values mean. If there was just a little chart that popped up right here, that would be ideal. So I know that the skin even here is almost overexposed. So you can just drop this down. So just bring down the exposure just a bit. So the next tool is isolate right here. So you can add a rectangle, ellipse or horizontal line. I'm gonna go through these one by one. So first a rectangle, and it's very similar to what I was doing before, just adding a little crop. But this by itself, this gives you a reference right on the vector scope and on the luma scope just by clicking it. And you can change to different places and see what the value is. This like, pfft, yes, please. Like, oh my God, I've wanted something like this in Final Cut for the longest time. And I've been using the crop tool before, but this is just, it isolates it very quickly and it's fantastic. The only thing that I wish is that it was able to, you're able to lock it in so you can make color adjustments based on this isolation. That's the only thing that's missing at this point. So you have the rectangle, you have the ellipse, which is just exactly what it says, an ellipse. You can still make adjustments so I can see that the skin tone is a little bit to the red side. So I can just, I can shift the tint away from the red and just double check it. I wish there was a way just to lock it in place and it remembered the size because every time you turn it off it just goes away and you have to start from the beginning again so horizontal line is like i i wish that final cut had this like this is so this is awesome this isolates just that one horizontal line and you can scan and actually see all the way through the image what your image is. So if you want to go to this section right here and see how bright that is, you know that that light is corresponded to the LumaScope and how bright it is. Or if you wanted to check this part here, you can see right on the line. Or if you want to see how the face is exposed, knowing that it's right in the center. This is such a handy tool to be very precise in your color grading and color, color correcting. I, I don't even know what to say. This is just the image analysis tools are one of my favorite features in this because I can use all the color correcting tools right in Final Cut and just use these as your image analysis tools, which are amazing. And not only that, you also get the, you get your isolate averages right on the screen. I always turn those off, but I, I love being able to see that. So if it just retained that and was able to hold it in. So you can see in the Luma that the skin is exposed nicely and it is the proper color. And I haven't even done anything with the coloring tools. So let's jump into that right now. Now let's talk about the color tools that are built into Color Finale. Color wheels, you have your curves, you have your six vector and you have your SLH curves. So you have your lift, gamma and gain. And this is something that if you ever used Colorista or DaVinci, color wheels 
are probably one of the best ways to quickly get around and adjust colors for the shadows and the highlights and the midtones. So in this case, I, if you if I wanted to add a little bit of teal to the background, maybe a little bit more orange. This is where the image analysis tools become really handy again. You can just double check to make sure that you haven't done anything too crazy like I have here. You can always come back and adjust it accordingly. And you can add saturation. And it's really simple to use, just like you expect. It allows you to reset just by hovering over it. The one thing that I would love is if you're able to click on click on the numbers and drag up. That would be an, a nice added feature. If we can add that, that would be fantastic. If you want to use sliders, you can do that as well for your reds, greens, and blues. You can quickly turn it on and off. I just like leaving the image analysis tool there. You can quickly check that your skin tones are exposed and correct. You can also add in your curves. Add in a little bit of contrast. And as always, with any kind of color correcting that you do and color grading, you never want to go too far with anything. I personally don't use the six vectors. This is closer to a Lightroom kind of tool. So if you're more familiar with this, this is this tool is available for you, but it does have the hue for hue, the hue versus saturation, the hue versus luma, the saturation versus luma. So all those tools are there. And if you wanted to, you can then group that whole segment and then just keep adding. So if I wanted to do a general color correction for the entire image, but then I wanted to add just a mask for the face. And I love this feature that you can then, you can track the mask right on the footage. This is something that I always wanted in Final Cut and now it's available. So you can track the mask. So once you have your mask tracked, you can adjust as you see fit. One of the things that I've learned is that if you want to add a mask to your color grade, it's best to do it in a group. That way you can add and subtract different things right into the group. So if you wanted to add a mask to the face, make the feather a little bit bigger, and then you can you can just go nuts and do whatever you want it to do. So if you find that you want to make local adjustments, this is one of the best ways to do it. I love that Color Finale brings this feature to Final Cut, mask tracking. So let's go to another shot. If you do have the X-Ray Color Checker Passport, this has a color chart tool built right into it. Choose it and then make your points around and just adjust it to make sure that it's in the right place. I found that when I switch it to assume log, the color shift, and when I try to match the chart, it it does some funky stuff. So I always leave it on assume video. I choose my chart, add the points, place it in, click match chart. And this is the only time that I find that it works correctly without changing the color profile to assume log or anything else. I always found that kind of weird because I got so used to doing assume log or setting it into ACES, but I don't use this feature too often because I do find that the colors are still a little bit off compared to what I expect them to be. Like this feature gets it to about 90% of the way there, but I still feel that it's still lacking and it doesn't, there's just something off. Like, like this one right here, I don't understand why that one is off where everything else seems to line up nicely. It's one of those ones that it just feels like a hit or a miss. But if you know that you've exposed your image correctly and you have your white balance in a really good place, then you won't need to have the color chart. But if you do use the gray card, you can always click, choose your middle gray, and that brings the image into a great place. But if you take this step, then you do have to add some extra to make sure that you bring your, your blacks down and your whites and balance the image a little bit better. It's a handy tool, but it's not something that I use too often, but I'm really glad that it is there because I know that there are scenarios where I have used it and it has saved my butt with the color. So say you have set your color grade and you think it's fantastic. You go up to the preferences, you hit export as LUT, and you've created your own LUT that you can then apply to every piece of footage or choose to sell it or do whatever you want, but it's all done within Final Cut. So if your main editor is Final Cut, this is a great tool to create your own looks, sell your looks, make your LUT packages, do whatever you want. 
It's built right in. So you don't have to learn a whole nother piece of software just to do exactly this one aspect. So when you've built your own LUT, you can import your own LUT here. And when you have a LUT, you can mix the intensity of it and choose the workspace that you're working in. And then you can still make all the color corrections down below. And you also have preferences. So you can go and add your LUTs here and they have a great feedback tool. So if you want to have any kind of help requests, enhancement requests or bug reports, this is the place that you would want to do that. So the other thing that I love about this plugin is that I also use it as a skin softening tool and it's using sharpness in the negative. So I would just do a color mask. I would highlight just the skin tones. I would make sure it's nice and soft. And then I would go to sharpness and just dial it back and it smooths out the skin, which is a nice little hidden bonus feature. The sharpening tool actually works really well in this. It feels natural, it feels really good. So I tend to bump it up to about 20 just to add that little bit of sharpness to the overall image. So that's before, and you can bump it up. You can crank it up pretty high and it still looks nice. So one thing that I don't use too much is the film emulation, but if you want to add grain to your shots, by all means, this is a great little tool. One thing that I would like to see in the future is have presets that you can buy or that are built into the app where it matches film grain from other cameras, from other actual film stocks. That would be a very good, useful tool. Otherwise it's a hit and miss and you're just playing around and, and you're just having fun and being creative with it. A lot of people tend to push it too far. If there was already a good set of presets that you could use, this would be a great way to just check it in and then dial it in. You can boost it or reduce it if it's too strong. One of the biggest advantages that I love about this plugin is that I no longer have to do any kind of round tripping. I used to export an XML from Final Cut and grade in DaVinci Resolve, but round tripping is never 100% perfect, especially if you have graphics and titles that are built in Final Cut. You'd always have to make some kind of compromise somewhere along the path. And if you have to make a tweak later on, you'd have to do it all over again. There used to be random crashes that would happen, but not too often, nothing too crazy. And Final Cut is very good at auto saving. It was just more annoying, but definitely with the latest version of 2.1, it's a lot more stable, so that's great. One really good thing about Color Finale and Final Cut Pro is that they both use Apple's color management natively, eliminating a lot of the issues. Color Finale feels like all the huge things that should be native in Final Cut and were missing for me to remain exclusively in Final Cut. I love that I can start and finish in Final Cut on many of my personal projects. It's a great addition to my toolkit and feels very intuitive. And if you're familiar with any color grading workflow, it's gonna be a great fit. Again, as I mentioned earlier, like, comment for your chance to win a free copy. Let me know what your thoughts are on this plugin. Big thank you to Color Finale for wanting to help you guys out. If you wanna learn more about the plugin or if you already own version one, they have an upgrade package that you may be interested in. Check out the links in the notes. That's it. As always, thanks for watching. Give this video a big thumbs up. I'm Rafael. I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.